All right. Well, next week, uh, I'm sorry, this week actually, we brought you a special report looking at quality within the life sciences industries. And one of the pieces in that series was written by Matthew M. Lowe, and he's the Executive Vice President of Master Control. Lowe's article, Top Five Things Life Sciences Companies Need to Know About ISO and FDA Requirements, uh, helped kick off our special report uh, this past Tuesday, November 13th. So joining us now to discuss his article and share some practical advice for those within the space is the man himself, Matthew Lowe. So Matt, thanks for joining us on Quality Digest Live. Thanks for having me, Mike. It's good to be here. Of course, mm -hmm. it's our pleasure. Uh, so Matt, to start off, um, the, the FDA and let's say ISO look at compliance in a different way. Can you kind of contrast the way FDA defines compliance maybe in the way an, an ISO standard might define compliance? Certainly, yeah, it's, it's a great question, uh, you know, particularly when you, you use the word compliance. You know, compliance really only pertains to FDA. F FDA is a regulation, it's a law in the United States. If you're gonna play in the United, in the United States market, you, you've got to comply with FDA regulations. Whereas with ISO standards, really what you're doing there is conforming with a standard. Yeah, when your ISO auditor comes into the building, uh, you know, that's a voluntary thing. You're, you're actually paying that ISO uh, notified body to come in and do that audit. Whereas you know, the FDA, you know, they, they show up with a badge and it's, it's a very different kind of a situation. Yeah, the, 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 uh, the, joke, far, the joke is FDA auditors are, are auditors with guns. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> and, and I can tell you from past experience, I, I've seen one that does carry a gun. Yeah. So it's, it, most of them don't, but th there are a few that do. Uh, as far as you know, what it means between the two, uh, with the issuance of the, the latest standard you know, on the med device side, uh, 13485, yeah, ISO really came a lot closer to FDA than they have been in the past. Uh, and, and of course, you know, the 13485 standard is well accepted globally uh, in other geographies where you're going to have to comply with certain regulations. Uh, so they're, they're fairly close together, um, but, but there is a difference between compliance and conforming. And Matt, we just were covering uh, Baldridge, and we talked about some of the differences between manufacturing and other in other industries uh, from the framework of the Baldridge. Now, for obviously obvious reasons, those in life sciences and the life science industry, uh, they have very stringent quality practices. So, what are the some of the key differences between them, those in that sector, versus uh, like general sector manufacturing, let's say, in terms of managing uh, their processes and their procedures? Certainly. Well, you know, just pointing back to kind of our discussion there at the beginning, you know, you're in general manufacturing when you're, for example, going for a, a 9000 or a 9001 certification, uh, you know, your BSI or your TUV auditor uh, isn't going to chain up your doors if, if you've got some observations, right? In the life sciences industry, that is very much a reality. You know, CEOs go to jail uh, for non non-compliance. Uh, so there's definitely a, a gravity difference there between the two. Uh, and, and for obvious reasons, uh, you know, those regulations are there to uh, protect public health and safety. Um, as far as you know, what you're doing in general, in general manufacturing versus life sciences, you know, the standards and the regulations are really designed uh, to make you a better business. If you're following those things, doing those things, you're gonna put out a high quality product, which everybody wants to do, whether you're in general manufacturing or pharmaceutical or med devices, whatever it may be. Uh, so so that's, that's a big part of it. And you write in your piece uh, kind of at a high level about these five uh, things that you uh, that those in this space need to be aware of. Can, can you kind of give us just an overview of what those five things that you write about are? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, you know, really kind of common sense uh, type things. Um, you know, the first one is that, you know, compliance from an FDA perspective or conformity from an ISO perspective is really in the proof. Uh, they are looking for 
artifacts? You know, what, what are the outcomes of that? Have you documented things? So that, that's a very important piece of it. Um, yeah, as far as uh, what, what you do from a compliance perspective, it is a, a collaborative process. You know, it's not just the quality or the regulatory department's job. It, everyone has to be involved in that process. Um, you know, kind of pointing back to, uh, you know, the proof is in the pudding there. Uh, it, digital technologies can really help out in that regard. Uh, because there is uh, this very real situation of, of having your doors chained up, you know, making sure that that proof is somewhere that is easily accessible, uh, it's efficient for your business, so it's not something that's dragging you down. Uh, you do have the validation requirement that is associated in the life sciences industries with using those technology tools. Uh, but really, that's just making sure that the tool you're utilizing is functioning as it was intended. Uh, so, so the digital piece becomes, I think, much more important uh, in the life sciences industry uh, when you're having to, to go through regular audits with not only FDA, but global regulatory bodies, uh, as well as your, your ISO notified body. Mm. And we, we hear, we understand that, that people in this industry, there really are still some that are using, you know, not really using the most <laughs> advanced tools. Uh, some people are still using binders, uh, actually, we, we understand. So w give us the case, uh, maybe for the digitalization piece of this and what you get from that. From the from the ability to communicate better throughout your organization using that device. absolutely yeah even for companies that may think they're using uh, you know technology digital technologies to improve their quality situation in a lot of cases yeah they're using uh, you know one-off uh, access databases or a SharePoint instance or using Excel spreadsheets they're all very disjointed. Um, and, and that's obviously the case with binders or a, a filing cabinet full of folders. Uh, being able to tie together the different aspects of your quality system, uh, get the data out of those, uh, compare across your different quality event channels. You, know, you think about uh, non-conforming material, uh, corrective and preventative action, customer complaints. Being able to see all of those things uh, quickly and re report on them in a way that it, you know, there's not a lot of burden in that. It can really go a long ways into uh, improving your business uh, from an efficiency perspective. You kind of get the compliance side by default. Uh, but you know, as I say in my article, com compliance doesn't necessarily mean quality. Ultimately, what you're after is a high quality product that's going to perform well. Uh, it's going to achieve its intended purpose, and it's going to be safe uh, and effective in the public. Mm -hmm. And in terms of dealing with the with the FDA, is there any value to these electronic tools, these IT tools, when dealing with the FDA? Is, 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 does it make the audit easier? Does the FDA prefer it in some way so that maybe you're getting kind of a, a leg up with the FDA if, if you're doing some sort of automated <laughs> system? Yeah, th there is definitely, uh, a, you know, they can't by law require you to do it. But uh, in today's day and age, it, there is an expectation. Uh, that, that you're employing technology in some way to meet those regulations. Uh, a, a good example is the MD-SAP program uh, that FDA is participating in now. I, I, I've talked to folks in the industry that have gone through their MD-SAP audit and that the auditor is actually timing how long it takes you to retrieve a piece of documentation or an artifact wow. that they've asked for. And clearly, technology is something that can help with that. Mm -hmm. Well, Matt Lowe, thanks for joining us today on Quality Digest Live and give us some insight into this important information. I think it's really valuable for, for anyone in the life sciences industry yep. to understand this. So thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Mike. All mm -hmm. right, appreciate it. That was Matt Lowe of Mastery Control joining us there to chat with us a little bit about life sciences and quality.